All right, good morning. I'm going to get a pen here. So we have been studying um, our inheritance in Ephesians 1. Okay, so we've been going through and looking at the inheritance there. We're in verse 11, so we're in Ephesians 1, 11. Read this together. We'll pray, and I'm hoping to get us through, kind of summarize. It's been six weeks since I've been up here due to the uh, Wiltshire shutdown. So uh, we, what's that? Uh, <laughs> oh boy. So, so yeah, it's been six weeks due to us shutting things down. So it's been a little while, so I'll try to give you a little bit of uh, what we did last time so you know where we're at, and then we'll keep going forward. Um, so let's read Ephesians. We'll start in verse 10. Ephesians 1.10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, that's what we're looking at, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Dear Lord, um, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to um, look into your word, um, get information about what you're doing, what your purpose is, how we can be a part of that, and we're just thankful for that and all these things. Amen. Okay, so um, last time we covered, we kind of did an overview of what we're saved from, right? We're saved from that wrath to come. We've obtained that salvation. Um, we've obtained the inheritance here. Uh, we don't. We went to. We looked at Thessalonians 5.9, we looked at Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 2, 13 and 14, we were saved from that wrath to come, we've obtained that, that's something we don't have to go through, right? That is in the ages to come here in the, in the chart, um, at the end, we're going to be raptured out. Um, we also looked at how do we get the inheritance, right? So how do we get that? We get that by being saved. That's the really fun part about this, it's in Ephesians here, it goes through... Um, all these different points of what it is to be in the body of Christ and the blessings that we have, these spiritual blessings. And you get to verse 11, and it says, in whom also, like also we have this, we, also, we have another blessing. We also have this inheritance coming, right? And so it just keeps listing all these things, and it's, it's a really cool to understand what he's doing with the body of Christ. Um, so we have obtained this inheritance through the gospel, right? Because the verse 13 and 14, it goes through that the Holy Spirit, we, we believe the word of truth, Holy Spirit comes out in and seals you. Then we went over to 2 Timothy, and we covered that um, he's going through kind of some, some stuff there and how we're, this is the same Lord, the same God, of Israel, right? He has a plan for them and he has a plan for us. So it's not a different, right? It's not people freak out when you talk about dispensational stuff. We're not talking like we have a different God. We have a different gospel, right? We have a different gospel that's for today, but he's got a plan for them. He's got a plan for us. So it's the same one. I mean, there's a lot of things that we share too with Israel, right? I mean, there's a lot of same, we have the same God. There's one of them. The inheritance, there's a lot of things that there's some similarities. Um, so we looked at that in 2 Timothy. We're going to go to 2 Timothy today. We also covered uh, suffering in short, and that's what we're going to look into today um, for the body of Christ. So we're participating in his purpose and doing things that matter for a heavenly purpose. So we looked into that a little bit. And then we ended with we're diving into errors of this verse. So my next message... I probably should have done that first and then gone through these errors. I did it the opposite. I, went through, I'm going, I, was, I wanted to go through the errors that people kind of read into this so that we could really fully understand what it is that he's talking about and what he's not talking about. So they kind of intertwine. So hopefully by the next message you'll be able to put all this together. I didn't know what the correct order was. But today we're going to finish what that second error is when people read this and what they understand from it incorrectly. And so once you get those out of the way, then you can read it properly. 
So the last time, right, the first error is we really dove into um, the prede predestinated here, um, and we found out, we went through a bunch of verses, right? So we went and looked at all the chance verses. We went and looked at how um, David and Samuel there, where he um, asked the Lord about what's going to happen, so he chose to do something different, and that altered what was going to happen, right? The Lord said that Saul is going to come and get you here if you stay here, so he left, and then he didn't, right? So what we found was that no matter what, God knows the, what's going to happen with any choice you make, right? So he knows if I didn't come here today, what would have happened in history? He knows all of those outcomes. And so what we really learned from this predestinated is that what? No matter what happens, his plan, this inheritance, what we're talking about here, is going to happen no matter what. So these are the things that, you know, the predestinated is talking about and what it isn't. Okay, so that's my summary of last time, just to kind of get you back in the groove. It's the morning. Now, you, now you're caught up and you're ready to go, right? Okay, here we go. So the second error is that your actions and time have nothing to do with eternity or have no inf influence on your eternity. Okay, so a lot of people don't necessarily connect those dots. Okay, with this inheritance. Um, so from the beginning, obviously, you know I'm not talking about your works determine if you're going to heaven or not, right? But there is, a, there is what our labor is here doing that has to be, that is influencing what our eternity is. And we're going to look into that, so that'll make sense here in a little bit. So, like I said, we're going to go to 2 Timothy. Flip on over to 2 Timothy 2. Okay, verse 10, 2 Timothy 2.10. We're going to start in 10. We're going to read down through. We, wrote, we, we read 10 last time. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. So we looked at that last time, that we might obtain the salvation we're, um, for that wrath to come, right? Um, elect's sake, here is the body of Christ. Verse 11 it is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Okay, we understand that. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. So this is why I said we're going to study the suffering here today. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. But then he, he, there's people that take that, right, and turn that into about our salvation, right? And, and right here it says what? rain. So we need, to, we need to really understand what this verse is and it isn't because it follows it up with verse 13. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, faithful, he cannot deny himself. All right? And there's actually another, we're going to go to another place in Corinthians where it says the exact same thing. Okay, so the suffering here is attached to um, reigning. Okay, and there's, there's a purpose here that God has. And we're going to be looking into that suffering here. So Colossians 3.23. If I could use my hands, I could get there. Okay, so Colossians 3.23, we've looked at this quite a few times in different angles. Remember, this kind of uh, matches up with Ephesians there when it talks about in the Spirit. Here in verse 16, it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you. And therefore, it's talking about all those things as if, you, uh, if you're a wife, if you're a husband, if you're a children, if you're a father, if you're going to stay in the word, right, you're going to do these things. Um, and then we get down to verse 22, which is servants, which is all of us in life. And what does it talk about? It says, servants, 22. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service or men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. 
And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. So what do we do when we go to work or we're doing things for people? What should we be doing? We should be doing that for the Lord, right? You can do work in the Lord. Not for men, but for the Lord. And you can, the Lord can work through you in those things, right? This word in you, you're doing it with, with all of your heart as to the Lord. Now, what does it follow up with in verse 24 there? Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Okay, so the, we live on purpose for the Lord. When you live on purpose for his glory, you share your life with him. You have a real relationship with the Lord because that word is in you, dwelling in you. You're actually doing his life here. He can live through you as his body, right? We're the body of Christ. So there's a reward of the inheritance. We have an inheritance. There's also a reward within that inheritance, right? We can, there's something inside that inheritance that there's even more. Um, Flip over to 1 Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians 3. Um, as a side note, you know, Thessalonians 2. Uh, I thought I had it written here. 2 Timothy 4. You know, they talk about a crown of righteousness and a crown of rejoicing. So there's, there's different things going on. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3 here. So we're going to read through quite a bit of this as it pertains to our inheritance here. So chapter 2 is ending. Do we have a clock up here today? No, you're okay. I just didn't know what time it was. I don't know where I'm at. Um, If I go over, just give me this and I'll know what you mean. Um, Okay, so Corinthians here in 2 ends with, uh, well, let's just read 14, okay? 1 Corinthians 2, 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit, for they are the foolishness, thanks, Tony, um, for they are the foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned, but he is the Spirit, he is spiritual, judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So it's ending, chapter 2 is ending with, like, we have the mind of Christ, right? What is that mind of Christ? Right? We have everything. There's, Israel did not have everything, right? We now have this finished book. We have everything. We have the mind of Christ. If you want to know what he's thinking, how he would do things in this life, this is it. Chapter 2 kind of ends with that. Chapter 3 starts talking to Corinthians here, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as spiritual, but as unto carnal, even and unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able, for ye are not carnal, or ye are yet carnal, for for whereas there is among you envying and strife and division, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, Excuse me, and another, I am Apollos, Apollos, are ye not carnal? Okay, so he's talking to Corinthians, like I had to start out with like the basics, right? And the Corinthians are kind of like starting, you'll see here in the next couple of verses here, that they're attaching their ministries to a person that taught them. Okay, so verse 5, this is really where I wanted to get to. Just trying to give you some context so you understand what's going on. Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos watered. So right, he's saying, I I came in, I planted. You you learned from Apollos. He kept watering on top of that, but God gave the increase, right? We're we're getting this from God. That's really who's, who's teaching you here. So then there is neither... So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that give the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward. Right. So now we're connecting things with Colossians there. According to his own labor. For we are laborers together 
with God, ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building, According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereupon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Okay, so Paul, what's that noise? Paul um, got the grace of God, which was given to him, right? We have a gospel through him, we have his ministry. He's the wise master builder because he was given this from God, right? And so, verse 11, for other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is in Christ, with, which is Jesus Christ. So you need to make sure you're building on the right thing, right? Can you build on another gospel? Right? You can build on another gospel that's false for today, Right? And so we need to pay attention to what Paul's saying and where your labor is going. Not get caught up in, you know, I'm in this ministry. Or I'm, I'm, everything is team. Everyone's wearing the, you know, the Jesus Christ T-shirt, right? And so we need to, that's who our foundation is on. That foundation comes through. There you go. <laughs> our, uh, that foundation comes through Jesus Christ because that's who gave it to Paul. Verse 11, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hair, stubble. So is it possible, you know, you want to have the work that's what kind? The gold, silver, and precious stones, right? You don't want to have the what? The wood, hay, and the stubble. Um, there's, there's labor to be had in verse uh, 9 there the labor that we have. You want to have a good labor, a good work. Um, you don't want to have the bad kind, right? Verse 13, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So God's going to look at what your labor was and see what kind it was, right? What, what sort of of labor did you have? Was it um, the gold, silver, and precious stone kind, or was it the wood, hay, and stubble kind? And there's a whole, um, I spent some messages about this, like the whole connection of what gold, silver, precious stones are, and wood, hay, and stubble, what, they, what they're what they connected to in the Bible. You can go back and find a bunch of that stuff, um, and what those really represent. Um, So, you need to make sure that you build upon Jesus Christ through Paul's word, teaching the gospel, um, the doctrine that he has. Um, that's the only way to have a successful ministry, right? That can provide a good labor in your walk. The gold, silver, and precious stone type. Verse 14, if any man's work abide, if any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Okay, so work in the ministry that God gave Paul produces what? A good labor, a good work, a good ministry. Okay, verse 15, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so by fire. So there, there's that connection right over to 2 Timothy there, that <coughs> you still have the inheritance, but you're going to suffer loss because what did you do? You had the wood, hay, and stubble. You, you built on another gospel, whatever it is, um, that's not built upon the, the foundation that Paul gave us. And if you don't follow that doctrine, as the context says, you'll suffer a loss from that. Your work of ministry was useless in that sense, right? It was not uh, something that's profitable to eternity. It's not something that's profitable to others. Because uh, you're sharing something that's not for today, not Paul's foundation. Okay, so let's go over to 2 Corinthians 5, 9.
We'll start in verse 6. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord, right? We'd, we'd rather be with him, right? Verse 9, here, here we go. Whether we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. So the labor that we have here, we want to be accepted of him. We want to um, have a pleasing um, presence of him when we get there, right? We want to have something that's worth something, our labor. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ... That's what we were talking about in 1 Corinthians there just a little bit ago, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Okay, so you can actually have labor that was either one. So good versus bad labor, right? You're either helping others with your capacity, um, helping them come to the truth, or you're leading them astray. Um, you know, yesterday, as a, as a kind of a side note, um, we were talking to people, and there was one lady, I handed out the, the, are you going to heaven track, and she's like, yes, right? And she says, I've accepted Jesus into my heart, okay? I, we, we get what they mean, right? But every time I read accepted in the Bible, like in Ephesians, right, we did a whole message on that, he makes us accepted, right? We don't accept him. Like, why would he want to come into our heart? We're, we're like, you know, we're just like filthy, right? He has to make us accepted, and then he accepts us, right? Because of through Christ the gospel. Morning. You're okay. Um, so I just, I don't know, a side note. Every time you read accepted here, it's, it's, it's just interesting when, we, when you talk to people about that stuff. And, and there's such a, it's funny how they use the same words, but they kind of twist them a little bit. And so, you know, especially us and what we understand through the dispensations um, and the different gospels going on, words mean something. So we've got we to gotta pay attention to those things. Um, okay, so we're talking, right, we're talking about the good versus bad labor here. And so helping others with the capacity to come to the truth or are you leading them astray? Our capacity to serve is based upon the doctrine we have to share, right? And are you using that doctrine to share the right thing? and the ability to serve with that, okay? In your capacity, whatever it is that you have, right? We're all good at different things, and are you using those things to do the right doctrine, or are you using those things with a good, different gospel or a different motive? Let your identity in Christ live out. So we get this, right? We studied this a year ago. Um, we get this, comes into our mind, our spirit. We're, we believe it in our soul, and then how do we labor? It comes out of us through our body, right? We use our body to do the labor, but it's guided by this. So that's the identity that we have. Are we laboring to do those sorts of things? This is how our reality in Christ comes down here, out through us, right? The reality of what Christ is doing, the reality of our inheritance, the reality of what's coming, we can act as if that's now because it is a predestined certain future. You can teach those things to people now. You can live as if it is now, because it is now, right? The word is in us, flowing outward. God taught our spirit. We believed it through this body, creating a walk worthy of God's calling. We need to transform your mind, this reality that we have in Christ, in your spirit and your mind to this truth to make it reality. Okay, so flip over to Romans 8, right? We're always flipping over to Romans 8. There's a lot of connections to 8. Verse 14. Romans 8, 14. 
For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Right? We looked at that. If you have the Spirit, you're in. You have the down payment. You've obtained an inheritance, right? And you're a son of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye are received of the spirit of adoption. We've looked into that, what the adoption is, that body, that future glorification, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. We have the earnest, it's our down payment. That's what we kind of studied before. Verse 17. And if children, then heirs. Okay, if there's an inheritance, who gets that? The heir, right? The heir gets that. And it, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Okay, so we, um, we are his and he is ours. Right? We are joint heirs with Christ. We're, we're inheriting um, what it is that he's purposing to do. And that's kind of what, why I said these two messages kind of intertwine. So the next message, I'm really going to go into what the inheritance is and what we're looking forward to. Um, right now, we're kind of looking at suffering. So I'm not going to go into detail about that. It's already 1040. So, um, but verse 17, right? So we're joint heirs with Christ. So here's the next thing. If so be that we suffer with him that we may be also glorified together. That glorified body, the future um, inheritance, the glory that's coming, we're going to be glorified with him. And if we suffer with him, that's going to be a reality. So, you know, we are sharing this inheritance, and that's what the heir gets, right? God has given the inheritance to Christ, and we are joined in that. God gets us, we get him, that glorified body, to serve with him in the heavenlies. Right? That's what is eventually going to happen here. Just like the rest of the spiritual blessings, you have the ability to live for the heavenly purpose, which it talks about there in Ephesians, that heavenly purpose that he purposed to do that's predestined. And if you do that, guess what? You're going to suffer here on earth. right? And remember, it's suffering with God. Okay? He is also suffering this time period. This, there's sin still going on, right? And if you're going to be about his purpose, if you truly make what he's doing, what your will is, right, what you're going to do, what his will is, you're going to suffer because this whole existence is suffering, right? Now, there's suffering just due to the sinful nature of this world, and there's also suffering if you're living for a godly purpose, um, the lost don't see what we see, therefore they oppose us. Um, and if you, know, if you live in the ministry, what's going to happen? Suffering. Um, like I said, it's for God. We just covered that. Um, that plan that's, that is predestinated to happen no matter what, you are... Um, now prepared to work in. If you get this doctrine in you, you know what his purpose is, you're going to be ready for eternity to serve, right? In that glorified body. Um, and so we're, we're suffering through this time for the glory that is to come. And that's, you know, anything you do in life that you try to do is, is hard and you suffer through it, right? But especially this. Um, and so you're going to be practiced and having that doctrine in you and living it out. Um, so it kind of reminded me of Romans 5. Okay? Flip over to Romans 5. And verse 4 there. I'll probably start in verse 2. Verse 2. Romans 5, 2. By whom we also have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in what? Tribulations also. And what do tribulations do? The suffering that we do, the labor that we do, that labor that we have, the tribulations here that come from that. Also knowing that the tribulation worketh what? Patience. And patience, what? Experience. 
you put this word in you, you're going to get experience knowing what it is to live for Christ, knowing, putting that doctrine in you, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given to us. Right? So we, we, we take this word, we put it in us, it's in our heart. That gives us hope for that glory that is to come. What does it say in verse uh, 2 there? Remember, uh, in the access by faith into the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So we have hope in that future glorification, that future body that we're going to get, the future body that's going to help us be, um, help him reign in the future, right? Israel is going to be reigning on earth. We're going to be reigning in the heavens with him. That inheritance that he's getting, he's getting the universe back to him. Right? And that's what we're going to kind of study. Well, we're going to study that next time and the, and the connections between all that. But our, as we live, as we labor this message out, that suffering, right, works experience. And we know what it is to live for Christ. We have the same purpose as him, which is to help the lost come to the truth, Right? A lot like what we were trying to do yesterday at the trick-or-treat candy thing, right? Trying to help people see what it is. They don't even know that they're looking for it, right? They're just getting candy, and all of a sudden we're talking to them about it. They have a chance to hear that. Now, luckily, we didn't have anyone to get too mad, but it's possible that, you know, you run into people that just make your life difficult, right? But there's suffering that comes from that. It's, they oppose this, um, but we get, to, we get the tribulation that comes through that. But we have that glory to come and that hope. So if you have Paul's message in your spirit and you work it out to produce good works that will be tried at the, that judgment seat according to Paul's gospel at the judgment seat, you, know, you can have a successful ministry that's for Christ and the suffering that comes with it. And we're going to suffer with him. Uh, but it's so great to know that we're, what we're a part of is eternal and predestined. You know, we're not suffering for something that's like, well, we hope this is going to happen. We know it's going to happen because that's what hope is, right? And that's what the suffering is. So don't think, all of this was to answer the question, um, don't think that, you know, what you're doing here doesn't have any impact on what eternity is, right? We can help people also learn this gospel. We can help people... You, know, you can build up the doctrine in you, Paul's message, to really learn. Okay? So it's, it's an amazing thing. It's the inheritance that we get to be a part of. Next message, we're going to try to go over, connect some dots between uh, what Israel, their inheritance, because they have inheritance too, our inheritance, try to look at those two things together, um, see the similarities, see the differences, and then I think this will make a lot more sense. So I, it's kind of hard to do all this in a short amount of time. But um, it's good to know what our blessings are, right? And our spiritual blessings of what we have, this inheritance. Let's pray. Dear Lord, uh, we thank you for uh, your amazing blessings that are in you. Um, we thank for you know, you your son dying on the cross uh, and paying for our sins, what we couldn't do. And we just have all this love in you, and we also have this inheritance that you give us, and it just keeps going, and the blessings are amazing. And we thank you. Amen. Amen. All right, grazing table.